Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I want to continue on the theme of uh, some of my previous videos where I was talking about the changing Earth albedo. So the Arctic specifically is getting a lot darker, absorbing a lot more solar radiation and therefore heating up much faster than the rest of the planet. And that slows down the jet streams. They become much wavier, causing extreme weather events. We're also getting tremendous um, heating in the Arctic. And this is drying out the vegetation. It's drying out peat bogs. And there's more uh, storms finding their way far up into the Arctic. And the lightning is igniting this fuel, causing these tremendous Arctic wildfires, which are very, very bad this year as the Arctic continues to warm. So I thought that um, the, the severity of this problem and the importance to the overall global climate system is, is um, I can't overstate it. It's very, very important. So I want to talk in detail about the, these Arctic wildfires in this video. So basically, this is uh, Earth Null School. So if you Google Earth Null School and you click on mode chemistry and look at the carbon monoxide, that's what we're looking at here. This is the look, a polar view upside down. There's Greenland, North America's up here. We're looking over Siberia and you can see all of these point sources of carbon dioxide. These show up if we go to sulfur dioxide, you can see the point sources, but also the sulfur dioxide as it is blown by the winds to various places, or we can look at particulates. So we can look at PM1. This is one micron diameter and smaller particles. You can see the distribution here. They're being produced by incomplete combustion in the wildfires. These are the PM2.5. This is all the PM1 plus the particles between 1 and 2.5 micron and the PM10, which is the PM2.5, in addition to all the particles between 2.5 and 10 micron in diameter. Okay, so you can see them here. So these are all signatures of the um, so SO4. These are all basically signatures of these fires. And you can see how they vary on a three hour basis here, going back three hours. Okay, so you can see the fires, uh, you know, depending on wind patterns, carrying the smoke, etc., carrying the CO. You can see the, um, the, the changing nature. Okay, uh, if we go back a day, okay, and zoom in on this region, then you can see the extent of these fires. So there's hundreds of fires up in the Arctic ongoing here. Okay, so I'm going back. To, uh, so I was, you know, this is July 20th now, and you can see the uh, fires uh, popping up and subsiding. Okay, so this is a huge problem for multiple reasons. It creates dark areas in the Arctic, which are low albedo, which absorb lots of sunlight. It produces lots and lots of carbon di dioxide, which goes up into the atmosphere from the combustion. It produces lots of ash and particles, which then are transported up to, to darken the Arctic by land, you know, when they cover sea ice and cover Greenland and so on, they cause the Arctic to be darker, accelerating the warming. Um, there's a, the carbon stored in peat bogs, for example, has been stored over hundreds or thousands of years, and it's all being released suddenly with these fires the uh, shrubs and things like that that are pulling CO2 out of the atmosphere are destroyed and burned and so that we lose that carbon sink and, and we also lose the carbon storage. So there's all of these negatives here. These fires, so satellite photos are showing massive swaths of the Arctic engulfed by flames in unprecedented wildfires. You, so you can see all these fires here and the flames Okay, um, the, uh, the hot and dry conditions in the northern hemisphere are, have created the ideal conditions for wire wildfires. Climate change with rising temperatures and shifts in precipitation patterns is amplifying the risk of wildfires and prolonging the season. Copernicus 
Atmospheric Monitoring Service, CAMS, observed more than 100 intense and long-lasting fires in the Arctic, and so on. So let's have a look at some of the links that are in this article. So this is uh, Greenland, wildfires in Greenland in July 2019. Here's an example of one burning here. So there's the scar pattern, um, different images, satellite images. This is 3.6 kilometers across. This is on Greenland, okay? So the, you know, whether it's shrubs or trees or peat that's growing on the, um, you know, areas that aren't covered by ice, um, you know, this is a huge, huge problem, of course. This is the World Meteorological Organization talking about unprecedented fire, wildfires in the Arctic. Um, Basically, you know, in addition to the direct threat from burning, wildfires, they release harmful pollutants like particulate matter. That's the PM1, PM2.5, PM10 I was talking about from Earth Null School, and also toxic gases such as carbon monoxide, which I was showing you. Nitrogen oxides are also released, um, non-methane, organic compounds, sulfur dioxides, etc. So during June, of 20 of this year, 2019, CAMS tracked over 100 intense and long-lived wildfires in the Arctic Circle. These fires emitted 50 megatons of carbon dioxide, which is equivalent to Sweden's total annual emissions. This is more than was released by Arctic fires in the same month, so for June, between 2010 and 2018 combined. And, uh, you know, temperatures are really, really high up there. Stuff is drying out. We're getting these fires. The northern part of the world, of course, is warming faster than the planet as a whole. That heat's drying out forests, making them more susceptible to burn. A recent study found Earth's boreal forests are burning at a rate unseen in the last 10,000 years. CO2 is released into the atmosphere. Like in Canada, mega fires in 2014 scorched more than 7 million acres of forest, released more than 103 million tons of carbon into the atmosphere. That's half as much as all the plants and trees in Canada typically absorb in an entire year. Okay, um, so we have a huge problem here. A huge problem. The Earth is starting to emit more carbon without help from human. We pushed it over a threshold and now stuff is burning in the high Arctic and carbon is being released and that carbon could eventually dwarf all human emissions in a short period of time. This is uh, a European fire site where you can get all the up-to-date stuff. Um, European Forest Fire Information System. There's a global one here where you can just enter the parameters. So we're just looking at these are where the fires are going on in Europe. These are the fires up in, in Russia and Siberia um, that, that we're talking about. So there, this is just the global wildfire information system to get real-time up-to-date information. This is a CAMS article um, talking about, this is a daily fire, this is basically from July 13th, it's on the stuff that was happening in June, so here we have the month of June, you can see the total radiative power, so the total power summed of all the fires that are burning up uh, in, the, you know, within the Arctic Circle, and you can see them peaking over here, and in July they're also very high, but the data is not shown here. Okay, loads of data there. Um, the, this talks, article talks about the vicious climate feedback loop, right? Basically, this, these fires are, uh, you know, it takes a long time to capture the carbon in peat, for example. Um, and this is the fires occurring. This is the aerosols produced in these fires from Alaska. The aerosols are going right up and that ash and soot is depositing right on the Arctic at the North Pole, basically here. Okay, um, peatlands are usually waterlogged, 95% water. That serves as a natural fire protection, but the warmer climate is drying them out, and then peatlands can ignite and they can burn for months, years, or even decades. They don't always produce massive flames, but they eat up the fuel. So these fires can smolder and burn under the ground, burning the old carbon, putting it up into the atmosphere. This is, uh, you know, so the new normal in Greenland, Siberia, Alaska, Canada, Australia, and in South Africa in the middle of the local winter. 
you know, it's, it's, cra it's crazy stuff. Um, this is a paper that talks about the burning of Boro Forest, how it's exceeding what we've seen in the past 10,000 years. So what they did, very interesting study, they looked from 1950 to 2010, and they looked at the actual observed area burned, log of, hex, of, of hectares burned, to see this trend, and then they compared it to the actual, they took a core um, through a bog or through a lake sediment, and they looked at the carbon, charcoal, so burned carbon, organic matter in the in it, and basically they could see the time when it was laid down and they can correlate it to, to give a fire history, and it correlates quite nicely with the observed data. So once they've established their char, basically they do a deeper core that goes back giving, goes back and has stuff laid down 10,000 years ago, and then they do the char record, and you can see an increase of fires over the last 10,000 years. They, they took an, an, a, and then they narrowed in on, a, on the last 3,000 years. So you can see this part of the graph here, and you can see the details and stuff. So basically, they're showing that the fires burning now are unprecedented over the last 10,000 years. Now, also, the way peat burns is, um, is, is different as I've alluded to. The Arctic is burning. Yes, the Arctic, the traditionally cold and wet one, large swaths of which are being consumed by all of these wildfires. Unprecedented, yes, but not unexplained. The Arctic's warming so fast, it's drying out the vegetation. Vegetation, The desiccation is in fueling the large blazes. The blazes, um, you know, it, it, the Arctic sparsely populated, so these blazes are going and spreading, and they're not being put out in lots of places. So far, Arctic fires have released 121 megatons of CO2 in the atmosphere this year. That's more than what Belgium emits annually. So, you know, Sweden was 50, you know, so it's t two and a half times what Sweden emits almost, was a, you know, because that was previously used as a benchmark, Sweden. The previous Arctic record was 110 megatons set in 2004. That was for the whole year. We're only in June. There's lots of more um, fire season going on in the Arctic, lots more burning, so it's going to blow away, you know, the previous record. I didn't realize that peat gives scotch its smoky flavor, but it does. So peatlands basically slowly decomposing organic matter like moss. It gradually builds up in a layer, perhaps several meters thick, and then it can harden into coal given enough time and pressure. Peatlands are the largest natural terrestrial carbon store on Earth. From this muck, the rest of the ecosystem sprouts. Trees don't grow very tall because of the low oxygen content in peat. The leaf canopy is thin, so more light reaches the ground, fueling the growth of the wet, fluffy sphagnum mosses. In a healthy system, these mosses keep the peatland from burning. In fact, peatland can act as a fire break, stopping neighboring wildfires from spreading. But not anymore. You know, peatlands that are draining, or when peat's wet, it's 95% water. When it dries, it condenses, shrinks a bit, turns into one of the most flammable substances in nature. Drier and denser are the double whammy. These peatlands ignite. You can burn well over a thousand years of carbon accumulation in a single fire. For every hectare of peatland, you might lose 200 tons of, car 200 tons of carbon into the atmosphere whereas a typical car emits five tons per year. So you can see what's going on here. Um, you know, when the peak catches fire, say from a lightning strike, a cigarette, et cetera, it can burn deeper and deeper into the ground and move laterally across the ecosystem, carving enormous holes in the soil. Three-dimensional fire can burn for months at a time, gnawing both downward and sideways through carbon-rich material. So there's massive carbon emissions. Massive damage to the soil and root systems, no more capturing of carbon. Um, and this is a huge, huge issue, right? Uh, because as the Arctic warms and warms, it then these peat um, areas start burning, fires start burning, and the emissions from the earth can exceed very quickly all of human emissions. So this is the problem with this massive feedback unprecedented Arctic firestorms from peatlands. Okay, this is a normal fire here. The peatland fire burns under the ground and produces huge amounts of CO2. And here's areas where it's burning. Thank you for listening.